Yeah. Okay. Well, don't worry about it. EVs are fine in the winter. Stop watching Fox News. You'll be fine. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'll be good. I love you too. I will talk to you later. <sighs> The EVs suck in the cold. Do the batteries totally drain out from 100% down to zero in just like eight hours of sitting out in the cold overnight? Do they not charge when you try to charge them when it's cold? Listen, you see a lot of stuff in the media. Some of it's true, most of it's not. Let's try and figure out what's really going on. We're gonna take the Polestar out for a drive in the cold and let's see how she does. Okay, so. Polestar, she's been sitting in the dark garage since Sunday. Dark in here. Purposely didn't turn the lights on. So since Sunday, this car has been sitting. Today's Thursday. It's been pretty cold all week. Um, nothing like the cold out in the Midwest. But most nights here, it's been down to around 10 degrees. I think the high today was like 25. It's about 25 degrees now, about 7.30 at night. So <clears throat> we're going to, uh, turn on. The first thing you can see that, uh, oh, there we go. That little snowflake. But she's been sitting here as I charged it up last week and thinking I was going to be doing some stuff this week. And I didn't. And you can see even the screen. Well, this car hasn't been driven in a few days. The uh, infotainment system basically shuts down when you open the doors or you sit in the seat. It basically has to reboot itself. But I am able to precondition and all that stuff. Um without that being like fully running. So that all works pretty well. So, so she's been sitting cold in the garage. Now this garage is not heated either. So even when it gets to be, you know, uh, down in the single digits, 10 degrees, um, it's still probably ambient temperature in the garage is probably five or 10 degrees higher than it is outside. But I haven't gone anywhere this week at all, so um, the car hasn't been in the sunshine. Nothing, it's just been sitting in the garage, so probably averaging out around 25 degrees the last few days. So now we're gonna take it for a spin and we're gonna test the efficiency from basically dead cold. I am preconditioning the cabin, however, because I am bougie and I don't like a cold ass. Okay. So reset the tripodometer. We're not gonna drive too far, but hopefully we'll be able to see what our efficiency is in the cold weather. Um, now you see it says 85% state of charge. Now on the app, when I started preconditioning, it said 87% state of charge, but I don't think that was 100% accurate. I, I tend to find the app is oftentimes off a little bit, maybe like plus or minus 1%. So I think we're probably really at 86% state of charge and I started preconditioning and it's been going about 20 minutes so um, kind of looks like we lost a percent just preconditioning for 20 minutes and this is 37 degrees Fahrenheit on the car but it's definitely colder than that in the garage so I'm not sure that's accurate either I mean maybe it is but I'm pretty sure I mean being 25 degrees outside and it was not warm that was like the high today um, I don't think it's gotten much warmer than that uh, inside the garage so i guess uh we shall see so let's get going we're driving out here uh in the dead of the night 7 34 p.m <laughs> dead of the night uh, but it snowed a couple of days ago and there's still you know quite a bit of snow on the ground which usually uh shows just how cold it's been because oftentimes you know when we do get a little bit of snow within a day or so it's all blacked up on these side streets but because it's been pretty cold the roads uh, the side streets still are pretty
pretty well, you know, got a nice thin layer of snow still on them. But, you know, cold weather EV driving, I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, it's obviously kind of been in the news this week um, with everything that went on in Chicago. Apparently there's some big problems. Kyle Connor went out there actually and, uh, you know, made a whole video going around to, diff- you know, Tesla superchargers and going around to uh, um, Electrify America and EVgo and, you know, sort of trying to figure out what was going on. Um, but, of course, all you hear in the media once again is you know you know evs don't work in the cold and that's just not true um they do work it's just a matter of you know being smart about it and i know there's going to be people that say well you know if it's a gas car you don't have to be smart about it you can just start the car up and drive it but is that really true i mean when you get down into 15 20 25 below zero Gas power cars sometimes have a hard time starting. I mean, they don't like it. Um, if you get into a gas car when it's, you know, zero degrees or 10 degrees or if it's five, 10 below zero, and you just start it up and want to go, it's not happy about it. I mean, it'll do it, but it doesn't like it. And EVs are basically the same thing. Now, if you have an EV and you just, you know, in the same kind of temperatures, seriously cold temperatures, you just get in and, and go with no preconditioning, no warming it up, it's not going to like it either. It's going to go, but it's not going to be real happy about it. And so to me, there's not that much difference. Now, when it comes to charging, there can be. I mean, if you were to take a Tesla or a Polestar like this one or any EV, a Mach-E, whatever it is, and you park it right next to a, a DC fast charger, uh, and leave it sitting there for 24 hours in sub-zero temperatures, and then you just you know plug it in and think it's going to just start charging. It's not. The battery's too cold to start charging. You know you need to let it warm up a little bit, precondition it, and that's really all you need to do. And you know if you are uh, anywhere from five to ten miles away from a DC fast charger and you get in your car in the morning or afternoon, whatever it is, I guess, and it's, you know, 10 below zero, precondition the car on the way to get it on the way to the the charger. And if it's a Tesla and you punch in that you're going to a charger, that Tesla will precondition and it will warm the battery up. You need to drive it a little bit. You know, you can't, if it's right around the corner from you, it's probably not enough time. But if you give it five or 10 minutes on the way to the uh, supercharger, it's going to warm that battery up. It knows how long it's going to take you to get there. It's going to start warming the battery up. It's going to do that. My Polestar, it doesn't really tell you it's preconditioning. It's not really a manual thing that you can do like on some cars. But if you uh, if you uh, put into the uh, Google Maps, which is the main nav for the Polestar, um, you search for chargers and you go to the one that's nearest you or you pick one to drive to, it's going to start preconditioning the battery, uh, you know, for arrival at that charger. So it's going to warm the battery up. So by the time you get to that DC fast charger, the battery is going to be warm enough to accept the charge. And, you know, that, that's a big deal. Like that, you know, that's just how battery chemistry works. Cold weather driving an EV is, to me, is not that much different than cold driving an ICE car. You just have to be prepared and know what you're doing. That's really all it is. All right. Let's see how we done did. Okay. So, we drove 12.2 miles. Yeah, see, 3 point, 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. There you go. 12 miles in the cold now, you know, 26 degrees. So, it, you know, this isn't like hyper cold, super cold, um, painfully cold, but it's cold. And, you know, this is kind of like average winter temperature, right? Like 26 degrees. I mean, most people uh, are not going to see day after day after day after day all winter long in sub-zero temperatures unless, you know, you're in Alaska or something or, you know, up in Canada, northern Canada, 
normal winter temperatures, you know, in the Northeast where I am and, you know, most of uh, the Northern United States in the winter time, you know, this is kind of average or kind of like a typical day. So, you know, um, not too bad. So we left at what, 85% state of charge. I'm just stopped in a parking lot right now, just um, under some light. Um, you know, so now it's 78% state of charge. So we only went 12 miles and basically burned off 7% of the battery. And you can see on the range indicator right there, those like squeak, those, uh, those uh, lines, you know, that's uh, an indication that, uh, you know, the battery gets a little bit less range because that's kind of when the friction brakes come on when you uh, hit regen. So normally at 78%, you wouldn't even see those lines. So that's what it kind of tells you is the battery is, you know, got a little bit less capacity it's under a little bit more load just because it's so cold or because it is cold you know it's below freezing and batteries do not like to be below freezing so there you go um so yeah i just stopped at a uh supermarket parking lot that's got a little bit of light i don't know if you can see me all that well i know that's not the the best lighting but um you know and i get it you want to see this face but you'll get to see it. Don't worry. Um, but anyway, um, you know, yeah. So, you know, a little more than 12 miles, 3.9 kilowatt hours, uh, uh, per mile. So, you know, not the best efficiency. Um, but that's, you know, it's cold and that's kind of expected for the Polestar. So again, like, you can drive in the cold. You know, I, I know some people think uh, and they hear these stories that you can't drive EVs in the cold. Oh, they don't work in the cold. They do. They work fine. They work just as well in the cold as they do in the warm. But it's just like an ice car. You, you do get less range. Um, you get less MPG in a gas car when it's cold. Gas cars do not like the cold, um, especially at a, in a cold start. You get less range, you get less miles per gallon in the cold than you do uh, in, in the warm weather. That's just a fact. Um, you know, it gets a little bit exaggerated with EVs um, just because, you know, we don't measure EVs in miles per gallon. It's, you know, in state of charge, it's range. And, um, you know, I think people are afraid of DC fast charging because they hear so many terrible stories. Now, you know, on, on that regard, it's not all untrue. I mean, if outside of Tesla superchargers, you do get a lot of terrible experiences at DC fast chargers. Um, the public charging system needs massive improvement. That's nothing new coming from me. I say that all the time. It needs massive improvement. And like, even when I watched Kyle Connor's video um, that he posted, I believe it was yesterday when he went to Chicago and he was driving around with one of his friends, uh, Murchie, I think, um, in his Mach-E, and they were going around to different chargers. They're at a Tesla Supercharger, and, you know, there was a whole bunch of plugs, but there was still a line. Now, that's not because it's cold. Same thing at the Electrify America station. You know, some of them were down, um, which is unfortunately quite typical at Electrify America stations, um, but the, and there's a lot of people waiting. They went to an EV Go where there was, I think one of them was down, maybe it was two. But again, there was a line. And it's not just because some of them were down, it's because there aren't enough of them. That's the real problem, okay? In Chicago, and I don't know what the charging infrastructure is like all throughout Chicago, but I mean, just this uh, random sampling, like you can see, you go to an EV Go station that's got four stalls, maybe eight plugs, and people have to wait. Um, there's not enough charging. If there were more charges, if there was a uh, more charging infrastructure, there would be less waiting and less anxiety. Um, if you watch, um, Bjorn in Norway, uh, which I'm sure if you're watching this, you probably watched Bjorn. Um, how often does he drive through Norway in sub-zero temperatures with no problem? He rolls up to a supercharger, um, and he can pan his camera around and you see uh, Circle K chargers, Ionity chargers. There's another um, charging company in Norway. I can't think of the name of it. But basically, he can, he can stop at any DC fast charger 
and pan his camera around almost all the time and you'll see one, two, three other operators that all have chargers. And it's very rare that it's just like two plugs or four plugs. The Tesla superchargers have tons of them. You know, the Ionities have a bunch. Um, the Circle Ks have a bunch. And they're all right there together. Like, 